right. Um, hi, everyone. So yeah, my, my name is Kari, and I'm here to talk about design for product design for startups. Um, I think this talk will be mostly, I think, a little bit geared towards founders. I, I thought it might be like, I think product design is a big topic. I wanted to narrow it somehow that we, we can get to some like practical level. Um, I think it's really um, interesting to actually come back to talk about this because I, I was like in SLOS in nine, nine years ago and I was also kind of like talking about the same topic. So it's, it's fun to come back to this. Um, since then, like, I, like the guys introduced me, um, I've been doing a few things. So uh, I founded this company, Kipt, which was in Y Combinator back in 2012. Um, and then we joined Coinbase, um, and then was also at Airbnb and now at Liner. And then I think like the one thing with this, all of these companies, I think have in common that all of them like value design very high. And I think like it's it with Coinbase and Airbnb's case, like you can see the success. Uh, I think with with Liner still remains to be seen. Um, just to like since this is about design, I thought well, I should put some visuals here. Um, so at Coinbase, I joined as the first designer. What it means that you kind of, I was the only designer as well, so you kind of have to do everything. So I started from the brand to, to and also made the websites and, and the products. Um, and then at Airbnb, I kind of worked mostly on the visual design. So Airbnb is a big company, there's a lot of designers. You kind of have to think about like what is the general direction because designers might have different ideas and like it, it doesn't like, like if there's too many ideas, it, the app becomes like, less coherent. And so I worked on this visual design language, which we always update it every year, and then also built, built this uh, design system to kind of support it. Um, I also worked on this um, serial typeface, which is a um, custom typeface or like a font for Airbnb. Um, so there, there was also like some brand work. And now with Linear, we started two, two and a half years ago. We had three co-founders, um, and I was, I was one of the co-founders co and also the designer. So again, like had to start start from zero and start designing like from the very beginning. Um, so today, I want to like touch a few topics about startup product design. So first, let's just like look like what is the design, like what kind of advantages design can create, and then secondly, talk about like like what it, what kind of different designs are there for different companies. Um, and then also about just hiring designers and also just like what is it in practice like maybe sometimes people um, Like when you look at something like ex existing company like Airbnb or something you see like there's a lot of stuff designed And it might be like hard to understand like where to start. So let's just like look at that some of the practical things um, So maybe this is obvious to some of you But I think I, I feel like we should still talk about it that I think like startups can be like design can be very um, big advantage to startups. Um, and I would say like design is as important, like almost as important as engineering. And I say like almost as important because I think like it's still more important that you have a product that works than, than just have nice designs for a product. Um, I think it can be really huge advantage early on. Um, it's like, I think the reason is that like a design doesn't necessarily, good design doesn't necessarily require a lot of resources. You can make a very good design very cheaply. Um, I mean, like one person can do a very good design, and they can do a lot of design. So that's why it's also like you are not losing, like in engineering or some other like roles, there might be like more need for more resources to build something bigger. But design, it can be like done easier. Um, and I think like today, it's also there's so many startups out there, so design can help you to stand out. Um, so let's talk about more practical terms. So I always think about startups are about growth because like you, you start from zero, you need to keep growing, you need to get users and customers. And what growth essentially usually is that you need to acquire people, um, you need to get them use the product, and then you need to keep them using the product. If you lose them, then like, again, like you, you don't have those users and customers. So let's look at the different stages. Um, so acquisition. I think that design can help there, like just do like it like you can create interest. Like if something looks, people are like visual, and like when you see something that looks cool or interesting, um, I think it it kind of like attracts people to pay more attention. Attention, and that's always something like it's, it's that's like one of your challenges as a startup. Like people are not paying attention, so design can help with that. Um, 
it's also like helps with the kind of clarity of the product. I think like if you have a good designer, they can help you to like clarify like the workflows or just the onboarding that people understand the value of the product better. Um, and then also obviously if the product is well designed, people likely will use it more. If they use it more, likely they will keep using it. Um, and that way like the design can help in all of these steps. If you don't have design, like good design or you haven't invested in it, it, you're probably creating friction in all of these steps, which then hinders your growth as a startup. Um, so that's just like a very basic example with, with our company. So we, we launched it um, a couple of years ago. We just put a website and a blog post out there. And we, we did spend some time on the design, but it wasn't like something like we spent like months on it. But it was like, I think like people found it really interesting. And so that's why we, we were able to get 10,000 users on our wait list um, after like two months. And I think that's a really good start when you start building a product and then you can start pulling those people in when you're ready. Um, even today, we still have people that come to our product just because they like the design. They don't necessarily have any like justifi other justification for it right, like in their heads. But they're just like, yeah, I like it, so that's why I use it. Um, and I, I don't like. I think it's great. Like I, I don't care why people come our become our customers. I just care that they become our customers. So again, I think it's it's there's like an example of how it can help. Um, okay, so let's talk about like not every company is the same. Not every product is the same. So I have this like a way of thinking about this, which is basically like this, you have this like a product design fit or design product fit. Like similar, you have a product market fit. So like every product a little bit needs like a different level of design or different level of different kind of design and also a different level of like investment into the design. Um, and I think like the other, so one is like the type of product. The other thing is like maybe you operate in an industry or like in a, in a space where you, there, there might be some like one thing is like trust might be like very important. Like this could be like usually like financial things or health related things that the, um, you need to really create trust and like th that's also like a, pro like a problem design can help to solve. Um, and like, so I have this framework which is basically like you can think about your product and see if it's, is it more like backend or frontend heavy? Um, and like basically like backend heavy is something like, I don't know, you have some kind of um, machine learning, I don't know, platform and most of the stuff happens in like most of the value of the product is in in the backend that what whatever the code does um, and then like a front end heavy example is something like an email client or a calendar where the backend is fairly basic but you people need to really use the interface like interface is the product and not the not the backend um, and then I think there's also the other aspect is like how much the people need to use the product so the more more frequent usage there is, so like if the usage is daily or multiple times in a day, you probably need to invest, and it's a front-end heavy application, you probably need to invest a lot in design. Um, if it's something like, I don't know, it's some back-end product, maybe people, I don't know, file, like submit their taxes every year, um, maybe that's less needed there. Um, but generally, I think like every startups need design, but there's also like different levels, so like how much you should invest. Um, yeah, so let's, let's look at the example, Coinbase. Coinbase, so back in 2004, uh, 14, crypto space was like pretty kind of technical. It's kind of hard to understand. I think it's still hard to understand, but I think specifically back then. Um, and then they also, with so the crypto was new, um, it's, it's Coinbase also like wanted to build this like a bank basically that like people buy, like exchange their, their dollars to Bitcoin or something and then they store it at Coinbase. So which means like it's, it needs a lot of trust. So, like you are like first trusting, giving them money, and then you also trusting them like keeping your money safe. Um, and then also like we just believe that like you, we cannot like Coinbase cannot be successful if crypto doesn't become successful or mainstream. So that was like the thing we tried to solve. Um, so like just like a basic example. Look at the website. So this is like when I started there. This is how it looked. Um, it's it's not. Bad. Like, I think like overall, like, like the, I think the product was pretty clear. Uh, it's just like visually, it kind of looks like a weekend project, and it doesn't. It's, it doesn't feel like you want to like 
like sp put like ten thousand dollars into this website, um, and like and they, I, I joined as the first like a, um, only designer, so I kind of had to like start working on this. Um, just to like I don't just to jump to to today. Um, so back then, like our problem was like, well, let's, how can we make a make a platform that people can really uh, understand and use? And today, like I look at the financials and it looks like they, they report that they have 33 million users on the platform and 10,000 institutions. Um, I think I read somewhere that like third of the population in the US has used bit, uh, crypto somehow. So I think like definitely that the mainstream happened. I think Coinbase like played a part in it. And I think also like the design in the end played part with Coinbase though, like how um, how we got people into this space. Um, then, like uh, another example, linear. It's like a very different app. So it's it's more like a tool. It's an issue issue tracker and a software development project management tool. So it's something like we think like for example, an engineer should use it every day, maybe multiple times a day. So what we our thinking was like we really need to invest into the experience. We really need to make it like work fast and make it make so that the experience is like clear and like people aren't confused. Um, and like that way we can get people to use it more and that way the, the whole tool is more valuable for the company that uses it. Um, so we, we had to like really focus on both on the, like the design but also the implementation of the design. Um, so yeah, let's see if the video works. Um, yeah, so for example, we have like this like a command menu. It's like a, some apps now have this. Like it, it's basically like a quick way to access a lot of features. Um, everything in the app you can do with keyboards. You can you can select things, but if you don't want to use a keyboard, you can also use a mouse. Everything also happens instantly, so there's no waiting. Um, it also works offline, so it doesn't matter if your internet connection is bad or like you are on a plane. You can still use it. Um, and overall, with the design, we just wanted to make it very clear and simple, and so that people don't feel like they have this like when they come to the tool that there's this like a, I don't know they need to use a lot of mental energy to just to understand what's happening because in the end, what we're trying to help people to do is do their work, and we kind of want that the tool like helps with that but doesn't get into the way. Um, okay, so let's move on. Um, so that's like a couple examples, like different kind of companies solving different problems. Uh, when I usually talk about product design, usually the founders then are like, oh, well, like, should we hire a designer? Um, I said like, yes, you should hire a designer. Um, I think like you should hire it as early as you can, usually probably after a seed round or something, like once you have some money to hire someone. I ideally, you have a designer as a co-founder, but that's not always, not always the case. But you should like try to hire someone like fairly soon. I think the reason is like it, it's like it that person can really help you to build and figure out the product and also like make it more successful. So that's why I think it's like important to hire early. Um, I don't recommend contracting like for design to freelancers or agencies or something. Um, I, similar to like I don't recommend like outsourcing to engineering. You, the problem is that like while they might do like a nice design for you, they don't still like really understand what you're trying to do, and like me, you, you probably don't understand it either that well. But the, it's your job to figure it out, um, and then like once you start working on it, you start figuring out more. But if you don't work on it internally, your team doesn't like do the designs so or they don't work on on the product. It it you don't get these learnings. So that's why I don't recommend like. As a last resort, like you really need some design, you can always ask someone to do it. But ideally, you hire someone for this. Um, and then, like people ask, like, well, I don't know, where do I find a designer? Like, I don't know, what what should I hire for? So, um, I think, like, first of all, like, I think I, I recommend people looking for someone who has a product design background. Um, I think you just need to understand there's different kinds of designers. There's graphic designers, like visual designers. There can be UX designers or, or lo like brand designers. So it's, it's not like every designer is the same, that their skill set is the same. Um, it doesn't mean that these designers can't do product design, but I think it's, if they haven't done any product design, then they probably uh, like, they need to learn a lot, um, which then like, makes, makes things harder. Um, so ideally, you find someone who has a little bit of experience in, in this. Um, 
I also like I don't uh, recommend people getting too too kind of hyped or impressed by big company names. Like yeah, this person worked at Facebook or Google or something. It doesn't ex exactly mean that they are a good fit for your startup. Um, the reason is that like large companies. Um, the, the way design works in a large company is very different than the, how design works in startups. In startups, you just try to get things done, like you need to design everything, like the whole product. In the large companies, a lot of times the designers are focusing on a very small area and working on a very small kind of visual uh, areas or just like features in general. So that, that's why I don't necessarily like recommend that. Or, or I mean, I don't think like, again, like, you cannot hire from these large companies. I would just like treat it as a flag that like, okay, like we need to check like in the, in the interviews, you just need to ask them like, okay, what kind of design did you do and try to get a sense that could they be a good fit. Um, if you don't know about design yourself, you don't have like that background, maybe you can try to use your friends that are designers or try to use your investors or try ask your investors, who, do they know any designers to, to talk to? Um, so I think like always when, when you're building a company, if you don't know something, ask someone to help you. And I think like you always find people can help you. Um, just to like ex very ex simple example, like how do you interview designers? Um, so one thing is, yeah, you should interview them. Like you asked about their background, similar to any other role. Um, just try to understand like what, what they actually have done and like what kind of team they worked on, how many people were in the team. Um, what kind of accomplishments they have done. And I think the next step often, you can ask the designer to do a portfolio review. Usually designers have a portfolio, they basically, or they can create one, and they basically just show the work that they um, have done. And like, you let them present that to you, like, to explain like, why they did certain things, and, like, uh, and then you can see their style. And, and also understanding in that. And then you can ask questions too, like oh, why did you choose this direction? Or like, how do you feel about it now? Like, would you change something later? Like, and that way you can kind of like get a sense of like what is their experience. Um, the third step, which is like sometimes, I don't know if it's, it's not always possible, but you can try to ask them like, do you some work? Um, at Linear, we've been doing this work trials where we ask people to um, work with us on a project for a couple of days but we will pay for that time. Um, so it kind of like a market rate pay for that, like a, we pay for that time. Um, at Airbnb, we ask them to do like some home assignments. Um, I think as a startup, it might be sometimes hard to ask people to do this because like you, I, I don't know, if someone is applying to Airbnb and we ask them like, you should do an assignment, they're like, okay, I will do an assignment. But as a startup, you don't always have that leverage. Um, but I think like the other thing you could do is just to ask them like, let's, let's hop on a call Let's look at some website or some product out there, talk about it, like how they would change it or what kind of things they would do to make it better. And then you can kind of see like what's their style or like how they approach problems. Um, and so that, that can, can be useful to get a sense. Um, and just like I said to expectations, I think like, uh, like if you're hiring someone to a startup, I think usually they should start contributing as soon as possible. Um, I think like sometimes there might be like maybe some designer worked in a large company and usually take months to get anything started because you need to do this research and whatever. Um, with the startup, you don't really have that luxury. You, you kind of have to set the expectations like, yeah, like we can research things, but we also need to like do stuff. So we can do both at the same time. And usually as a startup, you talk to people, you build something, you talk to them again. Um, and so I think like generally the, my expectation would be like a, like a designer should in a couple of weeks start producing something and not be like, well, I need to research this topic for like six months um, because then obviously you will be just wasting six months. Um, so it's better to get started faster. Um, okay, so let's talk about the, um, what, is, what is it like in practice? Like what is startup design? Yeah, there's all kinds of like you can read blog posts or I don't know books about pro like design, and there's a lot of things you can like how you can do design. Um, I just try to like in startups, I often tell designers who join startups and also founders that like don't just like over don't overthink it. Like it's not in the end that I don't know. I'd say like complicated. Um, like you just need 
the startups are often like you make something, then you realize this was like this was good or bad, and then you like make another version, and maybe that's better or or worse. So you always need to like make new versions. So that's why like don't try to like get everything perfect on in the beginning. You just need to kind of like keep moving. As and like as you keep moving, you keep learning more, and then you can improve things. Um, so. So, like few things you probably need as a startup. So like you need some kind of brand. It's probably obvious. You need some kind of logo or name. But again, like don't get kind of hung up on it. Like just decide a name. If you don't find anything amazing, like just decide something and just go with it. Like it's in the end, the name doesn't matter that much. You can always change it later too if you want to. Um, and like brands are also something like in the end, like even if you have the best logo out there, like you still don't have a brand. The brand is something that happens. Over time, when people see you, like your company doing something, like they, the the brand is formed in in people's minds. It's not in your, I don't know, website or or in in the in the slide deck or something. Um, so again, like I, I think, like I just for for startups, I would just do a very simple brand or logo and get get started and kind of move on. Um, so a couple of examples. So again, Coinbase. This was kind of like the logo initially. It's kind of, I don't know, it's fine. Um, it's a little kitschy. I think it's like very literal. It's like coin, like it's a coin, the name is Coinbase and it's like a stack of coins. So it's like a base of coins. Um, so, so I think like it, it wasn't, I didn't enjoy it. So um, I, I just proposed like maybe we'll just like, just take the word and put it, make it blue and then remove the uh, coin stack and make it, make it simple. And the company actually like managed to, I think, use basically use this logo until up to the IPO. Um, so it was it was good enough for that. So I always think like I don't think you should you do you don't need to do anything like super like complicated or try to like spend months on figuring out some kind of logo. In the end, it doesn't really matter. Um, and like it, it's, there's more important things that for you. Uh, just an example like from linear brand. So. Again, I think it's very simple. Like name, we just wanted something technical, something like progressive. There's like some kind of direction to it. Um, and then the logo is like, it's a circle that is kind of completing. So it's kind of symbolizing some kind of progression. Um, and, and then like, you just need a logo that can work in, uh, also in one color. So make sure that there's no like, I don't like putting like gradients on logos and stuff. Um, and then you just need to choose like what is your brand color? Are you are you blue, red, yellow? I don't know, whatever. Um, and then just choose something. You can always change it. Like you don't have to like spend months on like again like choosing a color. Just choose something you kind of feel like works. Um, and then you probably need to like think about okay, how does the logo is represented in an app or somewhere, or like an app icon. Um, you usually, even if you don't have a mobile app, you still probably need this kind of like a squarish. Um, simple uh, for different things, and then just like pick a typeface. It could be very basic. Like we use intern. Uh, it's it's not it's it's like pretty standard. A lot of people use it, so it's again it's not like a huge thing you need to spend time on. So th this is like basically like what you need for the brand, and then you can kind of move on. Um, the website. So like you as a startup, you need a website. Uh, um, again, like there's I think there will be different iterations as your company grows. You don't have to like start your company and then like spend I don't know like build like ten pages. The likelihood is like probably like you don't know enough in the very beginning to even make that kind of website successful. So so you just need to start with something and keep learning and adding more. So I just think there's like this different levels, which is like a wait list level and then um, like a launch site and then like eventually you grow more and you have like more more things to talk about. Um, just to do an example, like when we announced the company, it's, the website was pretty like much this. Um, there was like a headline, a subtitle, a little screenshot. It wasn't even a full screenshot, and a, like a place you can enter your email, and that that was it. That was like for several months. It was like that, and it worked fine. Um, then, like when when we started like getting closer to the launch, we started like adding stuff. Like we when, once we had more features, we wanted to s start to. Show those. So we added like bigger screenshots, more like I don't know some feature highlights, 
Um, so I'm, something about the team I think is useful early on to show that there's actual real people working on it. Um, and then like again, like when we're getting, good, getting at, at the launch, basically we use the same site but change the waitlist button into a sign up button. Um, and then just like improve the content again, like added some logos because now we had customers so we could do that. Um, and just like highlight different, different kind of features and, and testimonials. Um, oh, yeah, and then the growth, like what we have today, it's like again, like same similar stuff. We've been just like adding more, like improving what we have, uh, talking more about the features, and 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 yeah, again, testimonials. Um, yeah, so that's that was the website. Like I just understand that like there is different stages, so like you don't have to like start from here. You can start very small, and just like keep keep moving to to that direction. Um, so if you don't spend, like I would say, like don't spend a lot of time on brand or website early on. Like the, your more main focus should be the product, um, and so spend your time there. I don't have a lot of advice for that, like in this presentation, as I think like every product is a little bit different, so it's it's kind of hard to give like very generalized um, advice on that. Um, but a general advice is that like talk to the users as much as you can. Like make something, give it to them, see if they use it or not. They ask, if they don't use it, ask them like why not. Um, try to like try different ideas and like it's it's a lot of times as a startup you might like even our company linear like the first design wasn't the best, um, so we had to change it a couple of times. Um, other tip I have is like early on is might be a good idea to do this design system. It helps like kind of uh, make the engineering and design faster. And design system is basically that you you kind of codify these elements of design. So there's like colors and typefaces and, and stuff like that. That can really speed up the execution. Um, so that's why I recommend it. So that was it. Um, there's a lot of stuff about product design, but just to I don't know, wrap it up. Uh, basically, I think like design is an advantage for startups. You should hire. Um, Every company has a little different need for product design, so you need to think about that. And then, like you, when you hire, um, you probably should hire a product designer fairly soon. Um, and then, in the practice, don't just like don't spend months on trying to perfect things. Just like get moving. So that was it. So thank you.